get traffic and hopefully serve students better. Um, we'll have about 30 minutes of question and answer at the end. And I just ask that you keep your questions focused around the topics presented here. Um, we hope to do more in-depth SEO presentations later. Um, so if you have the opportunity, let us know what you're interested in learning and we may be able to cover those topics later on. Um, all right, so let's dive right in. SEO, search engine optimization. Um, and, oh, back one. Uh, search engine optimization is a set of processes aimed at improving a website's visibility in search engines. Um, the common ones out there are Google and Bing, um, and it's with the goal of getting more organic traffic. Um, you optimize your site for search engines by fulfilling users' search needs, um, by creating relevant and high quality content, and providing the best possible uh, user experience. There are there are two um, main aspects of SEO, uh, on-page and off-page. On-page SEO covers anything you can do on a web page to improve your rankings. Off-page SEO covers anything you can optimize outside of your site um, in an attempt to boost your rankings. Um, both are important components of any SEO uh, strategy, but you have more control over the on-page SEO factors, so focusing on those is a good place to start. Um, and then in this presentation, we'll talk specifically about some of these on-page SEO factors um, as you work to either improve your website or move it on to the new web design system. Um, every day, Google users conduct billions of searches for information and products. Um, so it's no surprise that search engines are usually one of the biggest traffic sources for a website. Um, and then to harness this traffic source's potential, you need to appear in the top search results for uh, target keywords, or which are just words or phrases that users type into search engines. Um, the higher you rank, the more people will visit your site. Um, and this graph shows the correlation between rank and the potential share of users that are likely to click on that search result. Um, the number one organic result is 10 times more likely to receive a click than the page ranking in the number 10 position. Um, and then if you look, the top three organic search results get more than 50% of all of the clicks. So in other words, neglecting SEO would mean you're neglecting one of the most important traffic channels and then leaving this space completely open to your competitors. Uh, here's an example of a typical search result for a query. Um, you often have ad spots, which are paid results, and below, the, um, below that are the unpaid listings or organic results. Um, if you're, a question you might ask is, um, if the top listing is more likely to get visited, why not just appear in the ad section? Um, the simple answer is that the vast majority of people just ignore ads and click on organic results instead. Um, so SEO takes more time and effort and resources, but once you rank for your target keywords, you can reach more people and generate a pa passive traffic um, that doesn't just disappear the moment you stop paying. Um, let's take a brief look at how search engines work so that um, we can understand a little bit of what we need to focus on for optimizing our sites. Um, the ultimate goal of any search engine is to make searchers happy with the results that they find. Um, so to achieve this, search engines need to find the best pages and serve them as the top search results. First, uh, Google uses computer programs, which are sometimes known as spiders or bots, uh, to crawl the web and look for new and updated pages. In order for Google to find a page, the page should have at least one link pointing to it. And this is called internal linking, and we'll talk about that a little later. Next, Google analyzes each page and tries to make sense of what that page is about. Um, and then it may store this information in a Google index, which is just a huge database of web pages. Um, when a user enters a query, Google then determines which pages are the best in terms of both quality and relevance and then ranks them on search engine results pages, um, otherwise known as SERPs. And Google uses a relatively complex process known as algorithms to rank pages. And these algorithms take into, a huge, uh, take into account a huge number of ranking factors to decide whether a specific page should rank. Um, you don't need to know how search engine algorithms work. Really, nobody knows with 100% certainty how they work. But knowing the basics of what search engine algorithms are looking for 
can help you better understand how SEO works and what it takes to optimizes, optimize your pages to rank in Google. Uh, the number one job in SEO is to ensure that you're offering relevant content. Why? Because Google's number one job is to show users relevant results. Relevance is much more than just showing a page about dogs that excludes pictures of cats when someone searches for a keyword dogs. Um, it's also about being concerned with the user's search intent um, or the reason why they use, um, use a particular search query. Um, there are four main types of search intent, navigational, informational, commercial, and transactional. Um, and here are just a few examples of each. Uh, my WSU login is an example of a user trying to search for a specific website. In this case, the my WSU. What is WSU is an example of someone looking for information about a specific topic. In this case, WSU. WSU reviews shows a user researching a particular service. So they want to know if WSU is a good brand. And then apply to WSU is an example of someone looking for a specific product, service, or brand. Um, if you search, for example, best dog food, you won't want you don't want to see articles about different types of dog diets or recipes for homemade dog food. Both of those options would be topically relevant, but they do not fulfill your search intent. And Google knows based on the behavior of millions of other users that if you search for best dog food, you're almost certainly gonna to wanna to buy dog food. And that's why Google ranks either product pages or reviews of the best dog food products because the search intent is transactional and commercial. So when analyzing the content on your pages, think about why people would be looking at that page and how to write it so that it answers the questions people are asking and fulfills their search intent. And without going too deep into keyword optimization, which we can cover in a later presentation, let's take a look at a few on-page SEO things that you can do to make your content more relevant, helpful to the user, and then indexable by search engines. Google's assessment of your website isn't limited to just technical factors. Google also monitors user interactions and um, the different ways that they engage with your site. Um, what this means is that user engagement me metrics reflect the quality of your website. So if you improve your site's user experience, you're also boosting your search engine performance. Two metrics that can help you determine how optimized your content is are engagement rate and bounce rate. Engagement rate is determined by a few different ways. If a user remained on the site longer than 10 seconds, viewed at least two pages, or initiated a conversion, which is just a type of action that you define that you want the users to do on a page, um, that user will register as engaged. Bounce rate is just the inverse of engagement rate, meaning if a user visits your page for less than 10 seconds, they will be considered a loss user. Loss user. Um, a high bounce rate can indicate that users aren't finding what they need. And similarly, if users spend little time on your pages, it may suggest that the content isn't engaging or meeting their needs. Uh, low bounce rate and more pages viewed at a time indicate engaging user experience, meaning that users are finding value while exploring your site. Um, the copy or the words that you feature on your website is one of the fundamental aspects of user experience. And it's basically just a tool for guiding users through your website, and it can have an effect on how long someone stays engaged. Google wants to make sure people are finding what they're looking for. So Google works to ensure that when it directs users to your website on its search engine, people can easily find that information. Uh, your website copy is more effective if it's easy for users to navigate. The, this results in longer and repeat visits to your website, thus a higher engagement rate used to calculate the value of your website by search engines. Um, here's some simple uh, optimized copy suggestions to use when looking at your content. You want the user to be able to scan the page for the information they need. So short, clear sentences are easy and to quickly skim. Uh, users don't want to try and figure out what you're saying 
they need to understand in simple words what you're trying to communicate. Um, if you have acronyms, make sure you define them. Um, make sure you put your um, department name on the page so they know where the information is coming from. Don't use language that professors or only departments know. Um, it's more important that you write to the user's intent rather than giving them a really in-depth explanation. Um, then you want to guide them to more of your content. If you answer one question on the page, what else might they ask and how do you guide them to that answer? Um, you can increase the engagement of the users by understanding what they're looking for and using your content to answer their questions and direct them to the next step. The more time spent on your site, the higher your engagement rate will be. So here we land at call to actions. To persuade the user to consume more, you need to include a call to action. Call to actions come in a variety of forms, but some of the most understood are text links and buttons. Your call to actions should not be generic, but lead a user to what you want them to do in the context of your goals. So if you have a helpful information page that answers a specific question a user would have, and you wanna guide them to a call or to fill out a form or to read another article, et cetera, then you need to have clear call to action that directs them to do that specific thing. So rather than just say apply, they need to know what they're applying for. So applying to uh, the nursing program is a much more descriptive and helpful call to action rather than call now, say to yourself, or say, speak to a nursing advisor. Um, a commonly used one is learn more or read more. Ask yourself, learn more what, or read more what, and build a more descriptive call to action. Um, and I included down here at the bottom an example of a call to action from our degree finder pages, where the button is generic, but the whole element works as a call to action. You have a description that lets the reader know exactly what to expect when they click that button, and it gives them an action for them to, to, to take. That lets go. Um, a clear call to action is much more helpful to the user and tells them exactly what to expect when they click that button um, or the link. They're more likely to click on it and stay engaged with your site, and search engines will be more likely to rank your page higher since it's optimized to be useful to the user. One of the key aspects of good SEO writing um, that we briefly touched on um, in past presentations is readability. Readability is just a measure of how easily your audience can read and understand your content. If your content's difficult to read, readers will bounce off your page and likely never come back. This decreases your engagement rate and signals to Google that your page doesn't have much value. One way that you can improve the readability is by using bullet points and numbered lists. They're great for presenting information in a clear and concise way, and readers love lists because they always know what to expect and how much of the content is left. Lists are easy to scan for important information. And lists are also a great opportunity to optimize your content for featured snippets, which take up the top space in Google search results. Um, and I provide an example here. If your content is featured in the Google SERP feature, this note shows that your web page is a credible source that users can trust. Um, here's an example which format would appeal the most to you. Both are in an acceptable format, but the list is more optimized for the reader because it's easier to scan for the information you need, and you'll have a greater opportunity for search engines to feature your list on their results page. All right, so now we're going to go through a few on-page uh, SEO things that you can do to optimize your site. Um, first is meta descriptions. A meta description is just a short summary of your page that it can, can appear below the title tag. And can is an important word because Google may not always display the meta description that you set for your article. Sometimes they override it and generate the description that they think will work best for the users. It's also worth mentioning that meta descriptions aren't a direct uh, ranking factor, um, but it's still worth optimizing them because a well-written meta description can encourage users to click on your site. Um, some tips to follow, match the search intent of the user, like we've been talking about. 
Do they want information? Are they looking for a specific website? Or do they want a quick answer to a question? You can use the meta description to provide a brief synopsis or a call to action based on what the user user's intent is. Um, in this example, the meta description is defining the agricultural food systems program. So I would expect to go to this page to find info on that program. Maybe I searched for the best ag food programs in Washington. Um, this is a commercial search intent. And if the site showed in the top listing, the meta description does a decent job of highlighting the site and what information I'm likely to find there. Um, and as the owner of the site, I would take a look at the page and try to understand the purpose of it, why someone would come to this page and make sure that my content and meta description accurately reflect the user search intent. Um, use active voice. So when you address the user directly, you'll communicate more clearly. Um, this meta description reads, Agricultural and Food Systems is an exciting college-wide interdisciplinary program offering a bachelor's degree with five majors. In this example, the program is the subject and it's offering something. It's offering the Bachelor of Science degree. So the program is taking an active role. It could be reworded to say the Bachelor's of Science degree offered by the Agricultural Food Systems, but then the subject is taking a back seat to the thing that is being offered. So the subject in that case is more passive. Active voice is a lighter tone that often encourages users to take action or have an active role. If you use action verbs like learn more, find out, you're encouraging that user to take an active role and click through to your web page. Also, we wanna keep meta descriptions brief. Google cuts off the description after about 105 characters on mobile. So keep it to one or two short sentences to stay below that threshold. All right, headings. Headings help to break up your content in an easy to read format. And this goes for both the user and the search engines. The H1 tag is the most prominent heading used to display what the article or the page is about. And every other heading that falls under the H1 is there to support that main heading. Subheadings, which are uh, H2 to H6 tags are basically miniature titles that divide your content into sections. Um, headings help in SEO by organizing your content and making it easier to read and understand. Um, you can use keywords in a natural way, meaning they make sense to the structure. They're not just there because you need them to be. And it allows users to easily scan the content for the information they need, which is great for user experience. Once you write your catchy H1 heading, that includes your main keyword, you'll structure your article with the supporting heading. H2 heading, subheadings should support your H1. H3 subheadings should support your H2s. And it creates a clear, logical structure that search engines can read and understand, making your content more useful to the users. Um, images. Not only do images make your content more accessible and attractive and engaging to users, but they're also important for SEO. Users have an ever-decreasing attention span, and if they have to wait for your page to load, they're likely to leave and go to the next listing in the search results. Images often take up a lot of space and cause your page to load slower. Thankfully, WordPress automatically reduces the sizes of the images on your web page to improve its load speed. So, it's not something that you'll necessarily have to worry about, but it's good to keep in mind the benefits of having reduced image sizes for SEO. Um, some of the greatest SEO benefits with images are their file names. Often images that get put into web pages are pulled with whatever random name that they were saved as. Google does not read the picture, but it does read the data behind the image. So you'll want a file name with relevant descriptive keywords to get the most SEO paper. Don't use underscores because search engines don't recognize them and they won't be able to see the words individually. It'll just read all as one word. Um, file names should make sense to both search engines and humans. For example, if the original name for an image of this woman in a lab is lab234.jpg, uh, rename it with a clear and more descriptive title such as 
student in a WSU School of Nursing lab. Viewers may understand the image, um, but search engine spiders also need clues. So without alternative text or alt text, search engines can't index your image content accurately. A good alt tag provides both context and helps visually impaired users. It's also helpful when a glitch prevents an image from loading. The alt tag will be displayed to the user rather than the image. Um, an alt tag should have more detail than the file name. So aim for about 10 to 15 words to convey something about the, the image. Um, another bit of text to keep in mind that's not directly related to SEO um, are image captions, which are the words directly beneath an image. Um, unlike file names and alt text, captions are visible and can add to a website experience, which can potentially improve um, engagement metrics. So having captions on your images is a, a good standard to have. Um, and then let's talk about unique images. Using stock photos is fine, but they won't necessarily help your search rankings because other websites likely use the same images. Unique written content is far better for SEO because search engines want to reward content that's relevant, useful, and adds something that other content does not have. And finally, the page copy can help search engines determine the relevancy of your images. So if your text doesn't include enough information to explain the image, um, expand the description. This benefits both the search engines and the user. Uh, Google also ranks images in Google Images. So if your content supports the image and your image is also optimized, you can potentially gain more website traffic from Google Images, which is probably not a source that you've ever thought about, but it's something um, to keep in mind. More website traffic shows Google that your page or um, shows Google that people find your content valuable and in turn that can help your web pages rankings. Um, and finally we'll talk about internal linking. Internal links are links that point to other pages on your own website. Their purpose is simply to direct readers to other valuable and relevant content. Internal links are also important for SEO because they distribute link equity or ranking power. So other pieces of content can also rank higher. Um, if, your, if one of your web pages ranks really well and you create a new article that supports that page that isn't ranking well, you can link to that article from your high ranking one and Google already sees your article as valuable and you can pass on that value to your new article. Uh, when adding internal links, make sure your anchor text or the clickable text that includes a link is relevant to the linked content. The idea is that the link should be super relevant. You're not just interlinking because you want to see all your content on your page, uh, uh, all your content rank higher. That's trying to trick the system, which is poor SEO practice. You want content that is valuable and relevant to the user. So don't just add links anywhere for the uh, and everywhere for the sake of it, only link to content where it naturally makes sense. For example, if you're writing an article about an agricultural program, you could add links to other pieces of content that provide more information on topics such as what you learn by pursuing a degree in agriculture or how to make it through your first year of the program. These links will help uh, readers learn more about the agricultural program and show Google that your site is an authority on that topic. Um, I have put together a reference checklist um, that should be shared in the chat. Um, you can use this to get started optimizing your web pages. Start by trying to understand the intent the user might have when coming to your web page. If you want a user to come to your page, it needs to match exactly what they're looking for and be as helpful as it can be. Um, and have a user experience that is better than they can get anywhere else. Uh, your web page should guide the user to the next steps you want them to take, whether diving deeper into additional information or filling out a form or applying for a program. Um, a web page that is trying to do many things at once is not going to be well optimized for the user 
And then, and in turn, Google will not see that page as an authority on anything that you're trying to, to get across on that page. So if you want the traffic, you have to make sure Google sees your web pages are worth showing. So take the time to understand your audiences, what they're looking for, and then give them an experience that they'll want to keep coming back for. Um, and with that, I'll open it up to any questions.